So it's raining outside. So I'm going to have to do my burpees indoors. But my house is older. I live in downtown Toronto, one of the older houses. So I don't want to jump. And my father was because the Japanese very so I want to look for. I don't want to risk breaking and anything and having to pay for repairs. It. So I'm just gonna do the standard burping about without money. the job. Why don't you ask your best friend's father okay. about my <coughs> And I said, Why? That's Mike. So why ask him? He said, Because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, What am what are you? He says, I'm an employee, I'm a government employee. I went, Oh, what's the difference? This is the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money. Or well, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And it says an employee doesn't have to know anything about money. Because the government will take care of the company will take care of. So I'm kind of all confused. So I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, Hey, I'm here, nine years old. Teach me about money. He said, Beat it, kid, you know. But that's when the story of Rich Ted Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. And now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck to understand that. Okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's the lunch for us, check her out. It looks like, just like there's a cat, you know, which comes first, a cat or a cat, or a, a cat chasing its tail. And so how do I learn about money? So I used to just break out a Monopoly game board. So I would work for free and pick up cigarette butts and get hotels and restaurants and I would clean and do menial tasks. And as I got older, I started getting into office work, and marketing, and accounting, and business. You know, but I always worked for free. Feels different. He would teach me about money, but the way Feels he taught me about money different. was playing Monopoly. And I finally one day I got a question. Like he doesn't feel Why are you going to teach me about money? What do you think we're doing? Oh. Monopoly. He goes, no, 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 no. What do you think like, we're doing? Usually when I do burpees, it feels Monopoly. like. What do you think we're doing? It feels doing? like. I don't know. Like I'm, like I'm charged up and I'm ready to go. And now it just yeah, feels like, I don't know, one green house. I think because I'm doing it indoors, but, many formulas for but it feels like, of money and like work. Of them, but one of the best ones found on the game of Monopoly, still is today. Have Ron Kiyosaki in the background. So what? He says, one of the greatest ways to acquire great wealth is playing so money. So it's like Four green houses, mm -hmm. one green house. Is that all there is? What do you think I'm doing? And I'm like, I don't know. So then he took me out and he showed me his greenhouses. And 10 years later, when I was 19, I was now in school in New York. And I come back to Hawaii and Rich Dad had bought the biggest piece of land smack dab in the middle of Waikiki Beach. And when you go to Waikiki Beach today, you'll see the high-end Regency Hotel. That was his hotel. Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly. Acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 what's called an assembly because that property wasn't that big at the time. So he had to buy out all the small guys. So when he came to a little, dirt, little old town, so he'd buy out this shop owner and buy that shop owner. And it took him a while, but he finally assembled the piece of property. And then he and he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Nine. And it just sold for $800 million. So that's how I learned about money. And that's because he refused, he refused to accept the paycheck. He said, the moment you accept the paycheck, the brain will fit. He just bought you a paycheck. He says, as long as you're hungry, you'll think. And he was a great, great teacher. So today when people ask me what I do, and then they know me as the author of Red Dead Toy Dad, I just say I play That's like 40. So I own greenhouses, I own big hotels, I own oil well, golf courses, businesses. I'm just playing Monopoly. That's all I do. You know, I re-listened to your book on the flight over from London, and I hadn't listened to it in maybe six years. And the first time I read Rich Dad Poor Dad, I thought it was a book about money. But when I when I listened to it a couple days ago, 
I saw it differently. I saw it as a book about fear, about self knowledge, about mindset. Describing these people and their Rich Dad Poor Dad to me was. World. They don't want to acknowledge it's about, it's about having a game plan is that what you were trying to do? and Coming realizing to that certain, oh, well, it's like any game, stuff. certain moves and certain the plays the have to be done before, before, yeah. before things go back, you know? So I had to write a brochure. The brochure That's why I feel like Rich Dad Poor Dad was. He gave me a game plan on how to get things right before it goes wrong. Anyways, that's so the real fact of the matter is, cash flow is about <coughs> accounting. Rich Dad Poor Dad is a book on accounting, <coughs> income statement, balance sheet, statement of capital. There's other good books too. But if you've ever taken accounting courses, there is no more course more boring than accounting. So to have Rich Dad Poor Dad be a book on accounting and be the number one personal finance book of all time, that says something. And it, it sold the cash flow gate. And today there's thousands of cash flow clubs all over the world. And the mission statement was people teaching people. You can bypass that school system. Because the school system will never teach you about money. The school system is designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist. But never about money. So once I That's got 50. old enough and I'd already retired and I was rich and so you know, even really well off. I'm thirsty. Well, my house is, kind of it always time. makes me feel I have to share what I know. But I'm not really happy with today's performance. I'm finishing the 100, but I don't know. I, think I really think it's because it's indoors. And then Rich Dad Porter came in 97. And um, the story goes, every publisher turned me down. They said, you don't know what you're talking about. But they said, savers were losers. Your house is not an asset. The rich don't work for money. And so the publishers are like my dad, academic superstars, you know, they have A students in school. And uh, so they turned the book down. And it took going by self-published route. You know, a lot of network marketing companies picked up the book, like Amway and those guys. And they picked up the book to help so we're at because it's about financial independence. They're about the same thing I am. And then Oprah called in 2000. And then the next time on Oprah, and I went from obscurity to world famous and overnight success in 2000. Then the book has been on the New York Times bestsellers for seven years until the New York Times took it off. They said it's been on too long. But as you know, I mean, most people in publishing or journalism, they're on the other side of the coin of capital. So they don't like guys to make money. And that's like my poor dad site. So that's kind of the story, and you know, I play, I play a Monopoly in real life. Uh, I don't need a job. I don't have a retirement. Don't need a retirement. I don't want to take that. But I felt the social responsibility to teach, and that's what I'm all about. That's sixty. This book is about accounting, and it is an amazing book on accounting because it makes it understandable. Yeah. I took accounting in business school and I knew what you mean what is born. But it is also a book about your own fears and I think that's why it resonates with people. Right. right. You're telling you things and know it is true. You know when they look in the mirror they're not making the correct choices. They're not being disciplined. They're doing the wrong thing. And they know they're unhappy. They can fear their whole lives going into the next paycheck. And it's understandable. You know, I will have fear. To be truthful, will have fear. It's just how you feel. And uh, you know, Einstein said, in imagination is more right, important than knowledge. All right, 60, right? But knowledge <coughs> empowers imagination. And what most people lack is real business knowledge, like accounting, you know, like debt, like tax. <coughs> you gotta know that stuff, but they don't teach you in school to anybody. So, and, and when people ask me, how did your rich dad learn? this when your poor dad a page they didn't and the answer is very simply my rich dad is my friend my best friend's father his father died when he was 13. so his so rich dad had his family business at 13 to run so he had to drop out of school which was his blessing you know this blessing and, you know sometimes a blessing doesn't look like a blessing but it turned out to be a blessing 
and then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, That's his 70. banker, his real estate agent. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. You see, most teachers in school, they're out of ethics. They teach subjects. They, don't, they themselves don't practice. You know, when I came in trouble my MBA program, I got into arguments with the marketing teacher because the guy didn't have a business. Then I got into arguments with the uh, accounting teacher because the accounting teacher didn't know accounting. I knew more about accounting than him because I actually worked in bookkeeping in my rich dad's companies. And so I'm not an accountant, but I understand accounting. So that was the end of my school years because I understood what a fake teacher is. A fake teacher is somebody who just wants That's a job and they'll teach anything. You know, they teach us to shine shoes and you pay them more money. But they really don't know what they're doing. For example, my calculus teacher, I was at, went to military school in New York. And uh, I asked the teacher, I said, you know, I'm in my third year of calculus now. It was called, it was called strength of materials. I said, am I ever going to use this stuff? He goes, no. No. But why do you teach it? I was like, I think. He said, do you ever use it? He goes, no. And that's why, you know, I, you have to think in life. One of the things I, I suggest to people, you've got to find a real teacher. For so that's 80? 20 more to 100. If somebody doesn't do what they teach. And a real teacher is doing what they teach every day. So my accountant, my attorney, is there in it every single day. That's how I learn, because every day I'm solving problems in my business. So I have, I have accountants and attorneys and bankers and all these people on speed dial. <coughs> I'm solving problems with my business. How, that's how, how I got smart. <laughs> how are we doing 21 years later since this book was published? With more information out there than ever, we've got the YouTube, we've got the internet, everything. Are people better educated about this? No. They're worse off. I mean, you know, I have a, my little Rich Dad radio show, and tomorrow I'm going to interview these team of, I think they're well, actually missing a giant jerks. And they're, they're, they're both, their book is called Coddling of the American Mind. It's how they're made, it's how our school systems are making us doing the So in school, they have this thing called the trickery effect. So you can't, as a teacher, you can't say anything that might upset the students. They don't want anything that might jar their point of view. So if I went to school, I'd be thrown out. Because I threatened them. I would, you know, I think it's a school about opening your eyes and mind to ideas. But that's not out of the way. Everyone's going to be PC, not politically correct. And it's killing. It's killing the brains of our kids are going back. But in their minds, they're more enlightened. You know, but if I don't, if I didn't have ideas that shut, I wouldn't learn anything. But now these trickery and sugar you know, like they, they don't let you have peanuts anymore. You know, so they, they found out if you one peanuts away from a child, their propensity to have peanut allergy goes up. I so definitely felt totally different today doing burpees so indoors. I have to say, it sucks. It takes when away the excitement. Day 16. Kind of the the this is where actually making our students.